I'll pass the time now to our worship team. <clears throat> well, good morning. Hopefully everyone can hear me okay. If you give me a thumbs up, I can see. That'd be great. All right. Um, we're going to start our time of worship. Our first song, uh, or singing, I mean, our first song is uh, Sea of Victory. Wow. Formed, but it won't prosper when the darkness falls it won't prevail cause a God I know serves only how to triumph my God will never fail oh my God will never fail I'm gonna see I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory, I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Every war he wages, he will win. And I'm not backing down from any giant. I know how this story ends. Oh, I know how this story ends. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Turn it for good, you turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good, you turn it for good. You take, you take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good, you turn it for good. The enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle. Mighty tower, your name 
is a shelter like no other in your name. Let the nation sing it louder, for nothing has the power to save. is a time for new traditions. Each week we will read a portion of scripture that is chosen to follow the church calendar. As we do this, we share our journey along with believers around the world who will also have this reading today. Jeremiah 31 verses 10 to 13. Listen to this message from the Lord, you nations of the world. Proclaim it in distant coastlands. The Lord who scattered his people will gather them and watch over them as a shepherd does his flock. For the Lord has redeemed Israel from those too strong for them. They will come home and sing songs of joy on the heights of Jerusalem. They will be radiant because of the Lord's good gifts, the abundant crops of grain, new wine and olive oil, and the healthy flocks and herds. Their life will be like a watered garden, and all their sorrows will be gone. The young women will dance for joy, and the men, old and young, will join in the celebration. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and exchange their sorrow for rejoicing. A scripture reading today is taken from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 18. I will be reading from the NIV version. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born, King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, 
for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star has appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord has said through the prophet. Out of Egypt, I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Rama, weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Thank you, Steve, for that reading this morning. Well, Happy New Year to all of you. It's uh, wonderful to start the new year uh, with worship and to be in your company to worship with you and to hear God's word together. The new year of uh, 2022 stretches out in front of us. What is it that you want to do this year? Have you made plans? Have you made any New Year's resolutions? You know, with the present rise of uh, COVID cases and the fact that we're still in the pandemic, perhaps, you know, your plan is simply to stay home and uh, to wait it out. But friends, how long can you wait? Speaking of waiting, uh, a believer was asking God something for the new year. So the man said, hey, God, can I ask you something? God said, yeah, sure, of course. The man asked what is a million years to you? God said, one second. And the man said, well, how about a million dollars? What is a million dollars to you? And God said, one penny. The man then asked, God, can you please give me a penny? And God said, yes, for sure. Just wait a second. Do you realize we've been waiting what seems like a very, very long time, since March 2019, when the pandemic uh, first started. How many of you honestly, okay, just be honest, how many of you thought that we would still be waiting 21 months later? How long do you think it will take for um, everyone to get their first shots, then their second shots, then their booster? How long before the Delta and Omicron variant disappears? You know, um, the scientific journal Nature asked more than 100 immunologists and those working with uh, the virus, um, how long 
it would be before the coronavirus could be eradicated. And almost 90% of the respondents of the scientists said that the coronavirus will become endemic, meaning it will be unlikely that it will ever completely disappear, but that the virus will continue to circulate in pockets among the population for many years to come. So let me ask you, are you just going to sit at home and wait until the coronavirus is completely eradicated before we resuming living our previously normal lives, which the scientists say would be unlikely anyway? Are you willing to continue existing at 50% or 40% your capacity for the whole of 2022? We're now living in the time of the new normal and the new normal includes COVID-19. So surely there must be something we can begin to do even in this new normal, even while the pandemic is still around us to more fully live our lives for Jesus. So that's the question this morning. As believers of Jesus, don't you think the new year is too precious a time for us just to wait around or God's purpose is far too important for us to just sit and wait for the end of the pandemic. We don't have unlimited time and we don't have enough time to waste either. I came to this realization um, uh, even more so this year uh, because of my dad's deteriorating health, how precious each day is. We don't know when our life on earth will end. Uh, so we have to make the most of each day while we can. Uh, you know, I'm at the age where after a night of playing badminton, I'm sore. I'm so sore the next day. I, I can hardly walk without any pain. And um, someone observed uh, when you're in your 60s, uh, you notice changes to your body and your ability uh, yearly. Uh, in their 70s, it's monthly changes. In your 80s, it's weekly changes. In your 90s, it's like daily changes. You wake up in the morning, you could do something, and at the end of the day, uh, you might not be able to do something. Well, the time will soon come when even if you want to do something, you may not be able to. So what can we do given our pandemic and all its restrictions and health risks? What should we be doing? How can we be faithful disciples, thriving, and not just merely surviving. God has given us the story of the Magi, and um, I, I want us to look carefully at the Magi. Uh, there are three insights in particular that I want to raise uh, for you uh, that might serve as a guide for us to following Jesus in the new normal. Firstly, the Magi, they were serious in their Bible study. Before they ever... Uh, took a step out of their house and onto the journey to follow the star in search of the newborn king. They studied the scriptures, and their studies led them to this little-known uh, writing of the prophet Micah, who prophesied about 700 years before Jesus was born. Uh, Micah is such an obscure book of the Bible. So in order to help you to engage a little bit more, okay, the first one to text or to put in the chat, what is the book before Micah will win a chocolate bar for me? <laughs> Your favorite chocolate bar, okay? So Joshua, uh, just check the chat, okay? Who is the first one to, without looking at the table of contents, find the book from the prophet Micah? What is the book before it? It's such an, uh, a little book, and yet... Um, the Magi, they found this little obscure prophecy. And they knew that the new ruler would be born in Bethlehem. So if, if the Magi knew that the newborn king would be born in Bethlehem, why did they go to Jerusalem? Well, they kind of figured 
if a king was to be born, he might be born in the capital city, would he not? And if anyone were to know where the king would be born, it would be the people in the capital city. Nevertheless, when they didn't find Jesus in Jerusalem, they asked for directions to Bethlehem. Why should we also be serious students of the scriptures? Well, it's because the Bible, the God's word is true. Everything, everything God has ever said will come to pass one day. All the prophecies will eventually be fulfilled. This prophecy in Micah that the new king would be born in Bethlehem. There are two other prophecies in our scriptures this morning. One from the prophet Hosea. It was Hosea who wrote 720 years before Jesus was born that uh, one uh, that the Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus would have to flee King Herod. They would have to go to Egypt. And many years later, God will call them out of Egypt. So that was fulfilled when Joseph uh, brought his family from Egypt back to Nazareth. There's another prophecy in our passage from the prophet Jeremiah about the tragedy that happened in Bethlehem, how the women, the mothers uh, in the region would be inconsolable of, because of what King Herod did in trying to kill, King, kill the baby Jesus. Friends, why should we seriously study the scriptures? Because it's true. Everything will come to pass. And secondly, it's because God's word is transformative. When you study the scriptures seriously, the scriptures change you. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 and 17 says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. You want to do something great? Study the scriptures. This is something we could do. Seriously study the scriptures during the pandemic. So even while we're stuck at home, uh, this is one thing that will change our lives, studying seriously. Secondly, the second insight um, is that the Magi were serious in their application of the word. So not only do you have to study seriously, you have to apply God's word seriously into your lives. Now, in contrast, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, they were experts in the scriptures. Um, but they were not serious in the application of the word, or else they would be, like the Magi, be looking for the new king. We know uh, how in Jesus' day, the Pharisees, they love uh, to quote scriptures in public. They love to test Jesus. They love to debate. They love public praise. But when it came to applying the scriptures into their lives, they were seriously negligent. Matthew uh, chapter 7, verse 26, Jesus said, everyone who hears these words of mine but does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came, the streams rose, the wind blew and beat against that house and it fell with a great crash. There are so many um, uh, crashes uh, in people's faith. These days, during the pandemic, people who normally um, nominally follow Jesus, they have all crashed and burned because there's no grounding of the scriptures in their lives and they have not applied the scriptures to their life. So how did the Magi apply what they had learned from their Bible study? They went on this extended search for the king. It, it may have taken them months and months. And according to uh, Herod, uh, perhaps over two years, they spared no expense. They searched, they traveled, they left their home, and they followed the star where, whenever it appeared, wherever it went, in order to find the one to be born king. If you skip the application of the word, uh, that would just be like um, the Pharisees just being expert of the word, but the word having no effect in your life. 
um, you know, there are no shortcuts to becoming more like Jesus. No shortcuts. Um, a story goes at Christmas time, there were three grown up sons who were very successful uh, in their um, work. And they all got together and said, when were they going to buy for their mother? The first son said, I'm going to buy her a brand new, big new house. The second son said, I will buy her a brand new Mercedes with her own chauffeur. The third, son, third one said, you know how mom hated to read the Bible and memorize the scriptures? I will buy mom a very special parrot. And this parrot has been trained for the past three years to recite the Bible cover to cover. All mama has to do is to name the chapter and verse and the parrot will recite the scriptures for her. So soon after Christmas, the, the mom, this is a modern mom, texted her thanks to her son. To the first son, she said, house too big. I only live in one room, too hard to clean the whole house. To the second son, she texted, I'm too old to travel. I mostly stay at home. Don't pay extra for the driver. But to the third son, she wrote, you gave the best gift. You know exactly what I like. The chicken was delicious. <laughs> there are no shortcuts to transformation. We have to seriously study the scriptures and then apply the scriptures. Do you, do you study the scriptures or do you take a shortcut? Do you wrestle with the truth of God and won't rest until you found a way to apply it to your life? Are you truly seeking to apply God's truth in your life or are you just going through the motions? Especially during the pandemic, if you're serious, if we are serious, we can certainly take the time to contemplate and reflect on God's word and find practical ways to apply God's word into our lives. So we have to be serious students of the word. We have to seriously apply the word to our lives. And then finally, the Magi were serious in their worship of Jesus. In contrast, Herod was not serious at all. I mean, he did say, go find the Christ, go find the baby, and then I will come and worship. It's not what you say, but what you do with your heart. You see, King Herod wanted to be king all by himself. And true worshipers, um, it's, it's how you worship. It's what your heart's intent is uh, that uh, shapes your worship. If you're serious about worship, then you honor God as king. And if you just go through the motions, well, you are the king. Take a look at the Magi. They were overjoyed when they came into Jesus's presence. They came personally. They left quietly, humbly. They were humbled. They bowed down. Uh, where uh, in their position, it normally would have been Mary and Joseph bowing down to them, but it was the Magi who was on their knees. And they came honoring Jesus with gifts. At the end of the day, worship is about giving something the most precious, most valuable part of yourself to the king. Um, you know, I, I just have to say a word. Um, we certainly have wonderful uh, uh, people, believers in our, in our church. When I challenge the congregation with the deficit uh, that we would um, chip in, all of us, to eliminate the deficit and how so many uh, took that to heart. Um, honoring Jesus, worshiping Jesus, uh, is to honor Jesus as the most precious, most important relationship that we have. Matthew reminds us what it's like for someone who finally realizes that they have found the king, who have a relationship with the king, and then they find the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a, mount, when a man found it, he hid it again and then in his joy went out, sold everything he had to buy that field. That's what it's like. 
The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away, sold everything he had to buy that pearl. Friends, how would you um, grade your worship during the pandemic? I know it's, it's wonderful uh, technology that we could be all on screen. Um, but in some ways, uh, worshiping virtually has degraded our worship somewhat, don't you think? I mean, you could have the screen on or you could turn the video off. Who knows? You could be brushing your teeth or uh, fixing yourself a cup of coffee. Um, and um, your, your heart would be distracted from honoring the king. What is your heart's intent for the coming year? Are you seeking to follow Jesus, to honor him, to love him, to serve him? If your heart's intent is right, God will honor you. God will more than meet you halfway, just like he did for the Magi. He will come and find you and give you his precious truths. God will reveal to you prophecies. God will send you signs even in the heavens, even let you dream dreams, leading you to find him and to fulfill his will. How can faithful disciples of Jesus thrive during the pandemic and not just survive the pandemic? Well, for starters, we need to be serious students of the word. We need to be serious in our intent to apply that word into our lives. And we need to be serious in our worship of the king. Like the Magi, let's be serious followers of the king. In a in this coming week, I will be emailing out to you uh, opportunities uh, for us to start new Bible study groups. At present, we only have one group meeting on Sunday morning to study the word. Wouldn't all of you like to study the word? And uh, so wait for that email to come out. May God bless the preaching of this word. Amen. Let's pray. Just take a, a moment of silence, if you will, and speak one-on-one -on -one with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If you have not already done so, set some spiritual goals for yourself. Why don't you take this moment now to do just that? Tell the Lord how you long to get into his word and not just to read it, for knowledge sake, but to apply it so that you will grow, you will be transformed in your knowledge of the word. And then to worship wholeheartedly, whether on screen or in person or in the quiet of your own study, to worship Jesus as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Precious Lord, come to us, reveal yourself to us, lead and guide us through your spirit. Allow us to be like the Magi who studied and applied, put into practice what they had learned and came looking to worship you. At the start of this new year, Lord, we want to do the same. Help us to follow you in the new normal. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, at this time now, we are invited to respond to the word that we have heard, the scriptures that we have, have read, as we are serious in our seeking and we follow the light. Star in the sky, we behold you. How could our eyes turn away? Drawn to the light of mercy that comes to make a way. A lamp for a path that was darkness. 
eternity secret revealed the hope to illumine these shadows a love that was born to heal and we will follow the light we will follow our hearts will not fear drawn to the hope of salvation we wait for the sun to appear and we will follow the light we will follow the light seeking the Lamb our Savior of Epiphany begins January 6th, the day celebrating the journey of the Magi to greet Christ, the newborn king. They brought gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, our gifts may not be so exotic, but what we do offer today and throughout the year uh, is our hearts, and we honor Jesus as the Lord of our lives and Savior of the world. Let us pray. God of majesty and mystery, we bring our gifts to you, grateful that you are with us in good times and in the hard times. We do not know what the year ahead will bring, um, but your love shines like a star to guide us. Bless these gifts that they may keep the light of Christ shining through us and through the church to offer the world truth and wisdom, healing and hope. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Our brother Steve will lead us in the prayers of the people. For today's prayer to people, when you hear these words, your kingdom come, please respond. Your will be done. Let us pray together. God creator of the sun and moon and stars, God of power and might, in your glory, you chose to become human and dwell among us. And we give you thanks and adoration for the gift you have given us and the blessings we have in you through him. To you, we give all praise and glory and honor through Jesus Christ, who is one with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and always. Merciful God, in baptism, you promise forgiveness and new life. We confess that we prefer our old lives. We cling to destructive habits. We nurture grudges. And we are reluctant to welcome or forgive one another. In your loving kindness, have mercy upon us and move among us so that we might live together with grace. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Father, we pray 
for people impacted by this COVID-19 and the variant Omicron. As we embark in another year of pandemic situations, we ask for your protection on those who are ill and for those who provide care for the sick. In your will, we ask that the world could overcome this pandemic and allow all of us to learn to manage this disease. Father, we pray that cooler heads will prevail over the escalating situations between Russia and the Western countries regarding Hungary, that your peace and love endure all over nations and other places of hurt and grief due to conflict. We ask that you protect the people impacted by natural disasters from hurricane, floodings, and wildfires that the recoveries be provided in shelter and food, and that your love will be revealed. We ask for your protection over people persecuted to, due to their religious beliefs and in human rights. Places such as China and Hong Kong and Myanmar and Afghanistan, all these could be overcome by your love and peace. Your kingdom come, your will be done. In Closer to Home, Lord, we pray for the body of believers in the GTA, for the churches, the ministries, and outreach programs. May your people shine forth to each other and to non-believers with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and faithfulness. We ask for your healing hands for brothers and sisters who are ill and recovering. Give them strength, comfort, resilience, and faith in your loving power. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Lord God, as we reflect on the words spoken to us by Pastor Alwyn today, may the Holy Spirit help us to understand how we are called to live today and tomorrow in your name. In Christ's name we pray and ask, amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Steve. As we go, we are invited to bless others. And as we go from our service today, we want to sing this one more song. It's not afraid. So we have confidence because we've seen how God is faithful to us. this confidence because I've seen the faithfulness of God still inside the storm the promise of the shore I trust the power of your word enough to seek your kingdom first Beyond the barren place, beyond the ocean waves. When I walk through the waters, I won't be overcome. When I go through the rivers, I will not be drowned. My God will make a way, so I am not afraid. the promises you make there isn't one that is delayed so I will not lose heart here I will lift my arms and start to sing into the night my praise will call the sun to rise to clear the battle one clear that it is done when i walk through the waters i won't be overcome when i go through the rivers i will not be drowned my god will make a way so i am not afraid when i am in the fire 
I will not feel the flame. I'll stand before the giant, declaring victory. My God will make a way, so I am not afraid. Before me, behind me, always beside me. No shadow, no valley, where you won't find me. be drowned. My God will make a way, so I am not afraid. Thank you, Eugene. Thank you, Nancy, for leading us in music worship. Uh, before the benediction, I just want to uh, congratulate Jeremiah uh, Jeremiah, I understand that you won the chocolate bar. The book of Jonah comes before Micah. So wonderful that you knew that. Friends, uh, just stretch out your, your arms and make a big bowl. Uh, as if God's going to put all his blessings on you. And he is. And he is. Friends, we are called to follow uh, Jesus, uh, even as the Magi did, seriously studying scriptures and applying it and worshiping. Let's do that in the coming year. And as you do, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day of your lives. Amen. <laughs>